Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Akabane101, and welcome back to Stellaris. We are currently playing as a Tau Empire, as you all know, throughout the series, we're trying to learn how to play the video game. I've actually now put a total of 15 hours into the game. I played with my good friend Cyrus, and i uh, been messing around, learning things here and there, but even still, I still have tons to learn. This game is uh, extremely in-depth, and I've really only... Uh, scraped the surface. I think I've only hit about year 2022 20, around there. Um, so yeah, I am a man of twos. The quad twos, if you will. Um, so yeah, we need to move out and try and potentially secure this potentially habitable planet. Um, but I don't believe we've... Have we, have we even claimed it yet? The ship is already performing this task. Perfect. We're 83% on the way there. We have a few minerals coming on out. Three science vessels, which is relatively reasonable. I feel like now that I've played a little bit more, I think the way to go is to go as many science vessels as there are forks heading out away from your star system. Um, essentially, we have one fork here going away. Then we have a nice little defensible zone there, and then we have another defensible zone down here in the south. So we really only needed two science vessels, but alas, I didn't know that when first starting. And it's not like it's a bad thing either. More science vessels means more discoveries more people that we can use to spend on uh, gathering research. Currently right now with our situation log here, we have a bunch of planets to go try and figure out what's going on there, as well as this one, which I get in all of my playthroughs. I've yet to ever acquire a single artifact. I have no idea what the hell these things are, man. They're so weird. Uh, but regardless, let's wait until we have enough to go purchase ourselves a colony ship. Uh, these guys are extremely valuable. Uh, having 95 of these would be very, very nice. Or 95 more alloys, ex uh, excuse me. Construction complete. All right. This is still going to be a pause possible playthrough, although when I was playing with my buddy Cyrus online, uh, the multiplayer in this game is really fun. You can actually pause it if you're the host, but we just played a normal, like a continuous normal playthrough, and this game is really fun uh, when you don't pause the game ever. It actually uh, really focuses your mind, and you're like, oh my god. What kind of crazy nonsense is going on here? Uh, all right, so first thing we're gonna do, of course, grab the mining bay. Just because we want that immediately. The reason I didn't do this on the overworld, if you hover over the thing, right? We got build mining stations. We don't have enough to pay for 200, and for some reason the game wants you to have the requisite amount of items before you go build them, even though you're just building them one at a time. I think the reason this option exists and the reason it blocks it out is in case you have multiple construction ships available at uh, any given time. Uh, and also we have detail map mode on. Apparently that defaults on, so that carries over between each individual game. But essentially what this is doing is showing us exactly all the information in every area. Of course, in green, that's what we're currently producing. And then in white, that is currently what we don't have. So yeah, I've learned a few things. It feels good, man. It feels good learning this game. At the beginning, when I'm going through the tutorial, this game is very confusing. Like, there's literally nothing this game does to teach you how to play the video game. You just have to play it and figure it out as you go along. Which is totally okay, but also very daunting for new players. Uh, especially myself, where I'm not the smartest, you know, not the smartest tool in the shed. And I've uh, been drinking all day, but hopefully I'll be able to freaking figure it out. I say all day. I've been drinking for like the past five hours. Notice the slur. In my in my voice as we go along here, but uh, family was over and we we're having some drinks, and I still got a little bit left of mine. Oh my god, silicon life forms. Some kind of burrowing silicon-based life from form inhabits a vast network of tunnels beneath a barren surface of Zandabon 4A or Alpha. As best as we can tell, the creatures feed off rocks and there is evidence to suggest that they possess a rudimentary form of intelligence. Their tunneling efforts have uh, shuffled large amounts of valuable minerals. Interesting. It's gonna add plus three to this specific uh, zone. Cool. When you're playing at normal speed, like shit, man. You're just like, all right, give me it, give me it, give me it. Good, good, good. <laughs> it's, it's pretty bad. Oh man. It's, uh, it's difficult to read things quickly, but most of these events that pop up, there's a lot of fluff with them. And then really the most important thing that we got to focus on is uh, what are we agreeing to? If there's no choice, then it doesn't matter as much. Like, look, what a waste. But at least now we add plus two to this item, right? But the fluff is nice, so I really enjoy it. Runaway greenhouse effect. 
There is evidence that the current climate of Wexelia 2 is the cause of a runaway greenhouse effect triggered by massive amounts of pollution. The oceans have boiled away and the planet is permanently enclosed in a dense cloud layer due to thick atmosphere. Scattered ruins from the indigenous civil civilization can still be found on the surface, suggesting an overpopulated culture that perished in the mid to late stages of industrial life. Let it be known, uh, climate change is probably a problem. Probably a problem with that planet. Gotta be a little careful with that stuff. I don't know if we have to actually worry about it too much as we go along here. Uh, but that's just seems to be the case for that planet. All right, so what are all our science vessels doing? They're all examining everything. I'm fun. Great, great, great. Uh, this guy up top here is being weird. I think you gotta wherever this guy and start heading on out. This guy can go left. That guy's going around and through the bottom. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, I see. This guy's going through the bottom. Wait, no, he's not. He's not even going down. Oh, my God. Okay, hold on. I gotta resort out my priorities here. Because we gotta make contact with alien life and figure out what we gotta cut off from them. The most important thing, as we all know, is to get a foothold on in space. And so, having a foothold in space will keep us alive and not dead. Yes. Quite, 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 quite. Quite good. Quite good. Now, thankfully, having three science vessels means we can push outwards. Uh, you know what? What the hell is this guy doing at the bottom again? Okay, so he's going down. Oh, I see what he's doing. So he's gonna go down through here and push out. You know what? Probably the reason for that was because we probably had limited usages for what he was doing. Um, so we don't want to push out super hard then. Or maybe. Aha. I feel like we would do better to do this. That, that, and then push up and out. So the other guy will get a little bit of a head start. What type of planet is this? It says potentially habitable. Ooh, desert planet. That ought to be pretty good. Uh, I also did a few test runs as a Tau, just kind of learning a little bit about them. But really, they're a very basic race. Like, um, sure, the, the negative debriding is bad, but we're already, we already sorted that problem out relatively well. Um, I don't know if the percentages are multiplicative or additive, but... Regardless, I think we've mostly negated the negative of our perk there. So I think we'll be okay. And then we'll just try and examine these planets real quick, get those surveys going out. And I think that'll be okay. Uh, currently right now, we only have one construction vessel, but that's just because we're trying to get ourselves a colony ship. So I think that's good. And let's back out for a little bit. Check out this planet. So we're at 70%. It kind of sucks. It kind of sucks. Um, both agriculture and... Generator District have tons of blockers on this planet, which really sucks. Essentially, we can create different districts here. City districts will give you more housing than most other jobs, as well as, I believe, a little bit of a bureaucracy. We'll probably figure this out really quick if we go here. As you can see, these, uh, oh man. Of course, it, it unpauses because I always hit pause uh, reactively. All right, hold on. We'll go through this first and then uh, I'll explain what I'm talking about. Uh, Xandabon 6. Strategic resource discovered. So this is one of the exotic items in the game. During a survey at Xandabon 6, the cast Alambizna discovered several exotic gases previously unknown to us. These gases have a variety of different uses, particularly in the operation of advanced energy-based weaponry and force fields. Some of the gases can also be used as starship fuel or even as recreational drugs. While we do not yet possess the means to extract this resource, we should seriously consider establishing control over the system for future exploitation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, exotic gases, or exotic items in general, these are all the items here. We have volatile motes, exotic gases, as we saw there. Uh, rare crystals, living metal, zro, dark matter, nanites. I don't know how much we'll get into those ones, but I'm pretty sure moats, exotic gases, and rare crystals. Pretty important. Pretty important, right? And then the rest of the stuff is like, I don't know. Maybe we're going to cross it. Maybe we won't. Um, but these are later in the game. We can craft them ourselves using buildings. <laughs> Districts, on the other hand, similar to these buildings here. And of course, this is in the build queue. So we still have 124 days until this happens. Uh, Districts will give us a clerk job as well as five housing. We have six housing left. Perfect, right? And um, the less housing you have, the higher chance you're probably going to get something like crime. 
which would be really unfortunate. I mean, if you have a lot of population, crime will skyrocket. And if we chose to go with a different route with a, instead of a unified population, but it was like two races that have kind of uh, one has taken over the other and, and has used them as kind of like a, not a slave, but close enough, right? Um, we could have done that too. We could have had Tau and Crute, but Crute aren't necessarily slaves. They're not necessarily indoctrinated, so I don't know. It's really difficult to do for that kind of stuff, but essentially right now, all we have to worry about is uh, the fact that we don't have any available jobs. We're about to get some more jobs anyway from the, the factory, and if we go to population, we're about to get some growth, so everything's going to kind of line up just right here for us, which is great. We don't have to worry about it too, too much. Um, but what I didn't explain is uh, we also have three industry jobs, one being for generator districts, one being for gathering minerals, and one being for gathering food, with uh, energy credits being very important for purchasing stuff, minerals being very important for creating ships, which ships are extremely valuable. Oh, my God. You have no idea. <laughs> the moment we get into combat, oh, my God. We only have limited ship usage as well. Naval capacity is so limited. Um, that once we go over it, it's kind of like Warcraft 3, where in Warcraft 3, if you have too much pop, you're going to be making less money, and you're gonna, it's going to be a damp on your freaking economy, but you got to deal with it because you need an army to defend yourself. Ah, so much stuff going on in Stellaris. It's actually awesome. This game is fan-freaking-tastic. This game is uh, is unreal. Engine 3. All right, let's see. We uh, finally finished that up. Let's go ahead and get the mining station here. Apparently Spotify is like, let's play some more Neurosphere. By the way, if you haven't played Warhammer 40,000 um, Mechanicus, go play it. It's awesome, available on GOG. I'm not affiliated, but it's a fantastic XCOM-like game. There's some really great writing. Go give it a look. All right, we're so close. We need more alloys. Of course, I went into this a little bit late, um, but of course, I was just kind of figuring out and fumbling around and learning all the things, right, as we go along here. But that's kind of the, uh, the fun of it, right? Just trying to figure out what the hell you're doing. and. I can only imagine how crazy this game is going to be on the harder difficulties. I hope the AI doesn't cheat. Too many games when you play on harder difficulties, the AI is just like, you know what? I'm just going to have more than you because I can. You know? <laughs> There's only settings in the game, though. They're like, certain AI units will just come with more. All right, cool. We got a level up here. Not really important. I find the level ups are kind of eh. I mean, they're, you might get lucky. You might find some crazy dude that has, like, amazing buffs to your research or something, and you probably want to pull them off and throw them into your main. If you get a new perk, whatever. It's cool, man. I'm not worried about it right now. I'm not going to min-max on that shit. All right, so we just uh, got another month out of the way. Currently 0903 in 2202. Let's go to our shipyard. Start making ourselves our very own colony ship. And you may notice that we're very we're tiptoeing with our influence. It seems that influence is a very very finite commodity. I mean, not, maybe not finite, but very limited. And you need it. You need it by declaring rivalries um, or you're spending it on edicts, right? That's these uh, huge buffs, such as uh, fortifying our, our borders to make a star bases uh, upgrade a little bit faster. Say you go into war with someone, you need to just drop some star bases real quick, upgrade some of your star parts. Boom, baby. You're ready to go. Obviously, your empire sprawl takes a little bit of a hit. Kind of similar to having too many ships. The bigger your empire is, the, the further we grow out, the more negatives we're going to get on our resource acquisition. There are ways to make your empire sprawl grow, but at the current time, not so much. Not so much. Not unless we keep pushing out and gathering more planets and expanding our empire uh, through gathering planets themselves rather than trying to reach way too far away, right? It's like trying to have arms that are too long for yourself, right? Extendo arms and shit like that. You gotta just really focus on what you're doing. All right. So, uh, we're gonna finish this up. I think we're gonna leave this system here immediately and just move on to uh, the Wexelia system because it looks like this one has some pretty nice research in it. The more research, the better. Our organization right now is all about that research. We got 30, 29, 29, which is way above average in your current... Uh, current day uh, Solaris games, right? So, very good stuff. As you can see, so even though we built a new building here, it kind of makes it look like you just built a building for the wrong item, consumer goods, but they just kind of pool all your buildings together just so you have a little bit of an easier time figuring out where everything is. Uh, so yeah, we have two buildings going for alloy factories, and I think at the end of the month, this kind of kicks itself up. 
Well, right, wait for a new month. And boom, we're at plus 20. Excellent. And we got someone that leveled up. And now they have research speed void craft. Cool, cool, cool. Very nice stuff. Through hard work and experience, he's leveled up. How awesome is that? We currently have 173 minerals, so we may want to consider selling some stuff off or buying some more minerals. We do have a lot of energy credits right now. As long as we're in the positive, we're going to be able to spend some resources a little bit, uh, you know, all over the place. I'm not too sure. Um, all right. We now know without a doubt that a thriving biosphere is not something you need to tout. Both the scientific and scientific community and the public at large are eager to learn more about the various forms of alien life found throughout the galaxy. Efforts to catalog the life forms we encounter are already underway, but our xenobiologists have urged us to focus on our planetary survey efforts on habitable life-bearing worlds. Very cool. Or we could say we have more important matters, and I think this gives us more influence. I think you're not spending influence on this. You're gaining influence. So by foregoing learning more about the world, you are getting more influence. Situation log updated. But of course we want to do more of this shit, because why not? So we're going to learn about more habitable worlds. This is just something we're going to do. It's very easy, so we don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, and hopefully we get more than the two that are nearby. But it looks like we have two pretty handy areas right next to us that we're going to collect and uh, get ready to go. But I don't think we're quite surveyed just yet. If we check this out... Oh, wow. We're actually right there. I might want to go and claim that, and it will pop out another baby. Anomaly found. Send him up there. Might as well, right? Shit. All right, let's see. The sensor profile of a mid-sized vessel was briefly detected inside of the upper, upper atmosphere of the gas giant. I can't speak English. Uh, this is challenging, so it's going to take 540 days, a year and a half. It's eh, not worth it. We'll leave it be for now. We can always come back to these in the future. Um, I don't think it's up forever but it's also not gone forever either so you know, I don't know I don't know I think we'll be okay I think we want the research though I think we still want the research not fully surveyed Ugh. it's gonna take a while for our colony ship even to pop out right so I think we'll be okay if we gather this one move on to the next so we're gonna another colony ship maybe I think it'll be okay. It's not fully surveyed. How are you doing? How much more do you got to... Oh my god, why would you pick this route? Look at this madman. Jesus. Alright, you know what? <laughs> How long will it take you to get over here? A year? Okay, well maybe not. Maybe not worth it. Alright, H to stop. I gotta remember that. All right, well, <laughs> that's so bad. Just uh, just enter orbit to the sun. Let's go hang out near the sun, man. It's a good thing the sun doesn't horribly melt your vehicles. That would be a pain. Well, you gotta keep in mind, this is also an RTS. And although it's an RTS, complete. although it's an RTS in the same vein as say, civilization, uh, even though civilization is turn-based, there's a lot of fun shit you can do. If you if you just play this game in real time, there's a lot of fun shit. That I really, really enjoy. Like, just fighting enemies, declaring war, having to worry about, like, where your attention is currently focused. That shit's a lot of fun. I really enjoy that. Because then you, you never feel like you're fully in control of any given situation. What do we got here? Continental world? Man. Gonna give me something better than that. Gonna give me more desert worlds. Oh man, we got 90% habitability. Ugh. All right, you know what? How soon? We had 144 days until our colony ships out. Ugh. You see, the problem is Eater of Ang is already ours. We might as well just go colonize that. I still feel like. I. <sighs> man. I think we're going to be able to do it in time. I think we can get it. I think we can get it. God, that sucks. He still has two more plants to go. So my, my construction ship is just sitting on his ass. Doing nothing at this point, which sucks. I could go and try and upgrade another one of my yards, but it costs a lot. It costs quite a bit. Like, for example... Uh, if we go back to Eater Vang. Oh. 
has gained a well-earned reputation as a crime fighter. She has publicly vowed to root out corruption and injustice wherever found. Oh, that's so cool. Good for you. Good for you. Uh, also, I clicked on something there. Whoops. I don't know how I did that. Oh, I, I told my uh, my battle fleet to move around. <laughs> well, you know what? Let's um let's move our battle fleet up with the the front lines for now. Not that it matters too much. We don't have any trade routes. So we don't have to worry about pirates just yet. We're getting the trade routes. So that's this little value right here. Trade routes are um, these rings. You trade them between your your hubs, and you can carry them with uh, trade hubs. Uh, you start with a trade hub, and you start with a shipyard, which is awesome. Uh, but yeah. I think we'll make another construction ship. I think that's just what we're going to do. We'll have one System go south, one go north. Complete. Oh, good, good, good job. Good job. There you go. We need science. And sure, the first planet we're going to make ain't going to be that hot. But that's okay. Actually, I think we're just going to go into making another super ship, another colony ship immediately. It takes a year for these damn things. And we we have another planet just right there. Right there for the picking. I don't know. Oh, we're not going to have enough alloys for it, though. So you know what? Might as well pop another construction ship out. All right, here we go. Where is it? There you are. Oh my god. He's like stuck inside the building for right now. <laughs> He's mating. These are how people are born. Okay, so now we have to send him out over to uh, Edor Vang. So we go into the planet Edor Vang. Look at this beautiful desert planet for our desert lizards. What a perfect faction. Um, yeah, and then we just click on the colony ship. Uh, we're gonna call them the the bang cast. And then we're gonna send them in. I need you boys to go colonize this planet. And we have to name it a very original name. As the Tau would. They would just name it Tau Sick. I mean, if you really think about it, that's what they do. That's what they do. Uh, and in the meantime... God, it's a hundred. It's a hundred just to get another one, but we kind of want... I don't think we can afford it, though. We don't get enough influence, really. Ah, you know what? We probably should, though. Make a construction ship. Push out. No! It's too expensive. It's too expensive. We can't do it. I feel like we're efficient enough this way. He still needs to make three structures anyway. Which is perfectly reasonable. Actually, oh! He's 67% done. We need more alloys. Get it in there! Get it in there! <laughs> we need another job available. So what happens is they pulled off a job from our farmers. It's all automatic at the moment. If we uh, if we disabled this, we could actually tell the the base to focus on generation of uh, energy credits or mining districts or agricultural district. It really doesn't matter though at this point. Um, all we want is more alloys and hope to goodness that crime doesn't go up. Crime doesn't pay. It actually really hurts your economy. So <clears throat> don't do it. Don't do it. Not that we have a choice. It just happens. It just happens. Usually, if you don't have enough amenities. You're going to run into that situation a lot. Uh, leave that be. Leave that be. This boy has just been hanging here for a while. What's taking you so long? How many planets are in the solar system? Way too many, apparently. Way too many. Construction complete. Look at this guy go. They're on the way. Oh, we have a new expansion. Hell yeah. So since we're colonizing right now, new colonies start with one pop. Excellent. Excellent. God bless. God bless. So now when they get to banging, they're banging on the ship before they get into the planet. Doesn't that work perfectly for us? I think so, considering we are terrible breeders. My God, we are bad. Um, all right. Perfect. I'll make another mining station here. And then, uh, oh my God, it's a double. So this is going to be real quick then. Hell yeah. We can't do anything there, so we'll just tell him to... Oh, hold on. We'll tell him to enter orbit when he's done. 
Get it on. God, it's so bright. My eyes, they burn. <laughs> the sins of a thousand suns burns my eyes. I'm so proud, guys. We're, we're popping them out. Popping the babies out. Oh, my God. Another colony ship is on the way. Hell, yeah. Hell, yeah. We're, oh, God. We are doing living the dream. I'm so sorry. I keep bumping the microphone. I'm a monster. Uh, I blame I blame me trying to drink at the same time as doing a video. Yeah, get him. Get him. Look at the robots go. I don't even know where what they're making. Because I think it's like way in a different spot. Well, let's not worry about that. I think we're going to get enough in time. In progress. Already, our colony ship has great, or gently, gently touched down at the top of a large flat mesa near the equator of the Tau Second. This location will serve well as a first landing site and the rivers that flow in the canyons below provide easy access to fresh water. The ship has been permanently converted into an administrative headquarters of the new settlement and its reactor core is in the process of being removed so that it may serve as the colony's temporary power source. Hundreds of small dents and prefab shelters have sprung up around the former starship's massive hull as colonists begin to disembark in large numbers and bang away the new city of Tau. May Tau live forever. May Tau live forever! I drink to that. All right, we did it. A great day for the Tau Empire. We get research for that too. We get um, engineering research. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. They're ripping apart a uh, spaceship, colony ship. Uh, and there you go. So yeah, this is our new colony. Hello, it's on a dry climate. It's a piece of shit. It has nothing yet, but once this bar is finished, System survey complete. Once that bar is finished progressing, then we are good to go. Yeah, good to go, comrade. All right, um, how are we doing? We are doing pretty solid. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna need to buy. I'm gonna need to buy some stuff. Okay. Let's go to the market, and let's just buy a hundred. Let's just buy a hundred minerals, and then we're good. Who are we buying and selling these from? I'm assuming there's a black market inside my own planets, and I'm buying and selling to them. You know, the people that you shouldn't be buying and selling from? Those are the people I'm going for right now. So, you know, that's where that goes, um, which is fine. And then take our construction ship. And the moment he finishes this up, we'll just tell him to build, and this will replace his order. Construction complete. There you go. One research station is going to give us four research points in two different departments. One being uh, physics and one being society. How awesome is that? And then he'll move on over here into Xandaban. Now we have a continental world with a 25% habitability. Now apparently terraforming is a thing in the game, uh, but I think it's mid to late game. So we're, I, I have never seen anyone terraform a thing in this game. So I'm hoping we can get it at some point, uh, but at the moment it is not a priority. So we will not get that. Anything that's above 50%, that's the way to go. That's the way to go. Am I, may I just say, the YouTube community for this game is... Oh, moi, 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 moi. Too good. Too good. 10 out of 10. They have helped so much in me trying to figure this game out, and I freaking love it. I freaking love it. I love games that have all these guides, this passionate community that just make videos and try and teach the community how to play the game and just have fun. Uh, it's, oh, so good, so good. The material composition of this asteroid differs significantly from its neighbors. It likely has a different origin than the other bodies of this asteroid belt and should be investigated more closely. All right, let's do that because it's only going to take 100 days. Let's unpause it. It'll take 100 years if we don't unpause it, as we all know. And uh, yeah, slowly but surely, we're really, uh, we're taking over the galaxy. <laughs> Research complete. Oh, perfect. All right. So we now have zero G refineries, which has unlocked a star base building known as Nebula Refinery. But one of the great things out there is uh, we got plus 10% uh, on mining station output, which I think 
also refers to... What? Oh, yeah, yeah, look at that. Um, I think it also refers to... Yeah, these are mining stations. So already we have a buff from this perk. But on top of that, if we were to, say, upgrade this, if we went to uh, Starport, upgrade it, and we went to the modules, I believe there is an option there now to assist with mining. Uh, it might just be that we gather minerals in the middle of nowhere. It might be that we can build them in Nebula. Who knows, right? But the, the most important thing being that we can build them. And uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, I know we barely progressed here, but this is going to be a slow-going series. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'm Akamine101, and I'll see you all next time. Take it easy.